Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday before Memorial Day. I'm going to do a quick video. Shaq waits for her cookies, and Asher's doing some ball throwing, which I know you guys have seen a bunch before, but hopefully it never gets old. But mostly I also want to tell about some updates. So here we go, Ash. Um, so I throw this ball for Asher who lives for it, as you can see. And we have like tons of holes in our yard. So I've cut down doing it a little. And again, I always have to preface my stuff because it is kind of like bragging. So I have to be very, very cautious because you have to have humility in all this. And people who don't probably get into huge trouble because here, bud, let me do it again. Drop. I just took Asher for a walk, but the point I'm making is so many dogs have been injured back, back, back from this kind of thing. And I mean, Asher is an incredibly well-structured dog. He has a lot of bone and, you know, yeah, arguably it's maybe too much bone because the standard calls for like that blend of bull and terrier. So maybe, a lot, not maybe even, but definitely, you're not going to have a perfect dog. So definitely a breed for a little bit less bone, but you never want to lose this. And also Asher so incredibly, he stops on a dime. He's been doing this for five years. The dog is never so much as limped for anything other but than a couple substances in his paws. I mean, and a lot of Staffords, much less strong bodied, just poorly structured and angled, have had a lot of uh, serious issues. Whereas Asher can do this day in and day out and maintain his unbelievable ability again to twist, turn, jump, run fast. So, and he hardly ever works up a sweat or whatever you would call it, the equivalent with dogs. But anyway, I just want to let you guys know a report. I took Daisy all by herself yesterday for a one-day show. It was a three-day show, but I only entered one day, and I got to stop and see my brother and sister after, which is rare, but also very good, because we can't have multiple dogs over there, because her dog is neurotic. Get back, Ash! Ash. And anyway, Daisy did awesome. She... Once again, won the really competitive bred by exhibitor class where there's a lot of beautiful dogs. I can't even do videos, you guys, because they're so close to me. Wait, wait, guys. Um, but she um, also once again got second place to uh, the overall. There were seven female class dogs entered. And Daisy has had so many reserves to big show. She's had reserves to 15 dogs before, reserves to 10 dogs, reserves. But again, I'm in absolutely no hurry to finish her anyway. And I think why she gets reserve, part of me thinks it's because of her unusual coloring. Because at the, if there's, there are a lot of nice bitches out in the ring yesterday. And so then when they go to pick, they usually end up picking the more traditional that's nice, and then Daisy gets that second place, like, vote of confidence, because she's so pretty, but Lexi and others think, and they're probably right, that it's just because she looks like a baby still. Her head hasn't quite, you know, fully gotten where it's going to be, but it's balanced to her body, but also she's very short-backed. And again, people brag about their dogs being short-backed, but our standard doesn't say short-backed. It says closely coupled which is actually very different. Well, not very different, but it's different. Asher's extremely closely coupled back, Ash, and uh, but I would not call him short-backed, which is good because, again, short-backed isn't always necessarily great. It's a cool little look because Daisy looks so compact, but there is nothing in our standard that talks about anything but tightly coupled, which just simply means the distance between the last rib and the beginning of the hip or loin, and uh, you're supposed to be able to put, like, three adult fingers, or four, I think, some argue, and Asher only has the ability for three, and I have small fingers. All right, ready, guys? One more show. So anyway, wanted to give you guys an update on the Al is on his journey this morning, eight hours away. It's a big surprise to Willow's final breeding. I know I told you all that I was going to do that, and speaking of humility, I'm a nervous wreck about that, because even though I checked with two veterinarians, um, my veterinarian and then this really great veterinarian that just moved but he used to live next door to us he was actually encouraging me to breed her again and and then talking to a bunch of uh, breeders that I respect in other breeds that there's zero problem with breeding a fourth time but because Willow's given us so much get back Ash I really worry that you no know, that it was pushing it or whatever back Asher, back but all right last time buddy because I don't want um, but anyway, I don't, I don't think it is, and I think, obviously, I don't think it is. I think she's in incredible health, and we're going to pamper her like crazy. 
and I will let you all know the theme, which again, I was thinking on my walk this morning, you got to be so cautious because we're going to call it the Wonder Willy theme and watch. Sometimes litters are a disaster, especially when you do an outcross. You just don't know. And But as long as we get healthy, beautiful, temperamented dogs, then the gorgeous show aspects or something we've had with the last couple litters, I can live without that. I don't want that to be the case. And I know a couple people would like show dogs, so I'm hoping. But with an outcross, you just don't know, maybe. But I'd love to see the same consistency that we've been having with our line breedings. I think that's a little too much to ask for. But let me tell you this, both Willow and the Sire are gorgeous, well-structured, beautiful dogs, great temperaments, everything going for them. But you just don't know what it's going to do when you mix because there really is very little commonality. Now, when you go back nine generations, it's not, it's like 2%. So it's not a hundred, like with Willow and Asher were 0% something from their parents. And then again, like I shared, Willow and Asher were outstanding and the other dogs were all super nice, but there was one wonky thing with each of the three of the remaining, not health wise, um, but just wonky. Uh, well, one might be considered health because it was the first time I had only one testicle to send on a dog. So that was potentially, good boy, Ash. I know, just a minute, guys. That was potentially, can be a health thing, usually typically isn't. They used to even allow people to cut, cut, register the dogs with that. But anyway, and then the other one just had a tail that kind of curled a little bit. And then the third had high years. And then I got Willow and Ash, who were almost perfect, almost perfect, I would say. And then... Um, so that's that with the outcross, the only other one I did. This one has more commonality going back to a beautiful dog, Jackstaff dog with, uh, it's white. So maybe we'll get white. This is the one we have the most common ancestors. And the bad thing is the ears are a little high. And there is that, I will be honest, the sire has some little bit of high ears, but himself he doesn't. He has perfect ears, I mean, but high ears on his lines and going back behind Sammy, Willow, well, even Willow and Asher's mom had a little bit of high ears, so I'm worried about getting some high ears, but Willow's thrown such beautiful ears and her ears are such tiny little rose ears that if we get like Asher's ears, a gorgeous little half prick, then that's totally fine. And some people don't even think Asher's are half prick, but they in fact are half prick. You just see so many high ears, it's hard to tell. Um, but Willow's are beautiful rose, so let's hope she stamps that on them. Anyway, I'm getting into too much like subtle nuances of show, so I'm going to stop it now and get the ball for Asher one last time.